Welcome back to the channel guys, Alex Eubank uploading every single day, day two in Charlotte, although I go to Orlando tomorrow. Got my rental car, so we already have the Z06 in Charlotte. I just applied for the lease, if you watched the last video, you haven't already checked it. Watch the last video, I went to go view a really cool apartment, like a loft style, open floor plan in uh, Charlotte. And I'm staying in my boys crib, so shout out Nate, JT, let me crash here. Uh, so I got a rental car, because I'm gonna go drive to Orlando, which is where my Mercedes is. I'm gonna grab that, drive that here on the 13th, I'm spending Valentine's Day here. Hopefully by then we can start moving in the new crib. Gotta go to Core 24, which is that new gym. Last time I was in Charlotte, I was filming. Super cool, like aesthetic, really good for filming good machines. So having a little pre workout meal. All I have today so far is at Chipotle. And then I went shopping, uh, grabbed a jewelry stuff. And yeah, so basically just running two Rice Krispie treats. And then I'm gonna be having for the first time, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off with one scoop before I go to two. I'm gonna do one scoop of the Strawberry Kiwi Godzilla from Rise, code Alex for 50 off. We're no longer with Alpha Line. I gotta keep reminding people this for the next couple of videos. No Alpha Line. I'll explain that whole process in another video or podcast. Just so I am in a far, 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 far better place right now. And I'm so happy to be back with Rise because I that was my initial first sponsor. So I'm gonna go run this. We'll get going. What's super dope about how I'll be living in Uptown is that both gyms that I would want to go to. One's more of like a content focus gym, the other is just gonna be the train. Are literally within less 10 minutes driving distance, which is actually freaking insane. Like that's so perfect. So, bless bro, I'm hyped. I hope I have my tripod bro. I don't know what I do with it. No way I left it in Nate's car bro, because it's good bro. Tastes like, uh, reminds me of, of Propel. I don't know why. Again, if you guys wanna support, Show some love. Code Alex, 15% off, bro. Absolutely stacked formula. Like, crack out of its mind. All right, so we're training chest at Core 24. Starting off, pre-exhausting my chest with the seated fly. This Atlantis equipment here is absolutely amazing. It's probably the best machines I've ever tried. Um, so if you guys know what pre-exhausting is, basically it's it's doing an isolation movement for a muscle group that's gonna allow you to kind of feel it. It's gonna fatigue it a little bit, but it's gonna allow you to have a better pump when you go on a more compound focus movement. So for chest, you do a fly before you do a bench press. Usually people just go right into a bench press. Now you are gonna be a little bit weaker when you go into the bench press, but you're going to feel your pecs fire 10,000 times more than if you were just to go right into a bench press off rip. So that's what I've always done to get a really good mind muscle connection to my chest. I feel like that's contributed a lot to my chest growth is starting off with the fly and then going into my pressing movements. I'm still going really heavy here on the fly. Still focusing on progressive overload. The biggest thing again, stretching and squeezing. Any exercise you can get the best stretch on and the best contraction on is always going to be the best movement that you should always incorporate in your program. So for me, a fly like this, especially a seated fly, I always get the best contractions and stretches. So doing three working sets, rep range here was around eight, eight to 10. Uh, again, focusing on a really good tempo. When I say tempo, slow negative, really squeeze it, and then do you know, three, four second eccentric, maybe a half second pause on the stretch, and then finishing off with partials once you can't do a four up on your own, and then sometimes adding in a drop set. So usually I'll do two or three full working sets. Last set I'll incorporate a drop set. Every single set I incorporate the partials um, or a static hold on the stretch. So after we did the fly, we went into our first compound pressing movement, which is a plate loaded incline bench. Um, now my tip here is I try and I don't keep my elbows out and flared. A lot of people do that. I bring them in a little bit because when you're pressing with your chest, you want to kind of scoop the weight. You know, you don't want to go just up and down. The way your fibers are aligned, you'll get more out of it. If you push through your back, push with your lats in a scooping motion, bringing your elbows kind of closer to your body and then scooping them towards the sky, um, you'll get a better contraction and you just get more out of your out of your chest. So focusing a lot again on time and attention, really focusing on a good stretch and a good squeeze. Once I can't get a good clean rep with fail, uh, going, to, going to failure, then I stop. Um, and then the last set I did a drop set. So I think I did three working sets, finishing with partials, last set, drop set. Um, and that was our, our, that's all we did for chest. Now you're gonna be like, why didn't you do any more? For me, my chest is, I don't need a bigger chest. My chest is the best part of my body, my physique. So I'd rather spend more time focusing on my weaker points to make them match my chest. So I did a lot of shoulder stuff today. Now, if you don't have a big chest and you're trying to grow a bigger chest, what I would add to this would probably be one of my favorites, weighted dips. I love weighted dips would be a great alternative. Um, a pec deck, 
a cable fly um, or like a flat based plate loaded movement um, going to failure would be great so usually I would say max three exercises for chest you don't need any more than that if you're training with adequate intensity you don't need more volume than that doing three ish working sets two failure for each one so nine working sets total next up we did shoulders starting off with this rear delt variation of this I love this shoulder machine it's phenomenal Atlantis again has like the best equipment uh, I only did like two working sets of this, two failure, and then I did a drop set. I load, I dropped the weight like three or four levels on the stack, and then would finish with some partials, um, just to kind of get blood in my in my rear delt. Now, being natural, the thing that we lack are, is 3D delts. The way to get 3D delts is to build the lateral and the posterior, posterior, right? Yeah, head of your shoulder. There's three heads of your shoulder: the anterior delt, the posterior delt, and the lateral head. Um, so to basically get all that, the lateral head and the, and the rear delt is going to give you that really 3D effect. So spamming lateral raises and uh, spamming like rear delt flies is going to kind of help you round out your shoulder. You already get a lot of work on your anterior, the front delt, when you're doing a lot of chest movements or when you're bench pressing. So for me on a push day like this or a chest day, I don't really do any isolation movements for my front delt. So I did two working sets of failure, the rear delt variation. I did three or no, four of the seated lateral raise. Again, everything is a drop set here. And then with some partials and then we went to a regular standing lateral raise we did three working sets to failure with that finishing off with partials and then we did two working sets to failure of seated lateral raises to failure so again a lot of lateral raises i didn't do any pressing movements for shoulder today shoulders today usually i would do maybe like a smith machine um shoulder press but i don't know i just felt like doing a lot of lateral raises which i feel like tear my shoulders up and i don't know i did this most muscular pose in this and i felt like it looked absolutely cracked so um yeah i'm up about three ish pounds from when i was in charlotte last when i was you know i think just from being sick and just eating a little bit more still think we look good pretty conditioned not as lean as we were last time we were here but um yeah i haven't really been doing cardio so i think we still look good for not really doing cardio or having a diet um but yeah Charlotte's been amazing. Love this gym. The Core 24 gym is probably the best gym when it comes to filming. And then Fitness Factory is like the best gym to go to if you're trying to be like a bodybuilder and like train, train. So I'll probably be switching between both of them. But Core 24 lighting is just so cracked. And they have like the really good Atlantis machine. So if you go there when it's not crowded, it's really good. Um, that's pretty much it for the workout portion of the video. We'll get into the, the Bible study. Turn up a little bit. All right. Now, before we get into the Bible study, um, I've been thinking for a minute because it's people have been always asking like, yo, are you ever going to do coaching, coaching? So that goes for, you know, whether it's fitness, physique, coaching, mental mentality stuff or business stuff type of coaching, just like more intimate inner circle type thing. And I've been debating on running it. I want to see the demand for it. So I, I made a wait list. If you guys want to check it out, enter the wait list for what, if I end up actually going through and running this and be the first ones that I'll reach out to, um, I'll have a link down below. The first link in the description, if you guys want to go enter your info there to receive the waitlist info stuff, um, if you guys would be interested in working with me on a more intimate level like that. So time to get into the quick Bible study for this video. And then I'm sorry for the late upload again. I've been traveling. I literally got to Char or I got to Charlotte. I drove overnight, got there at 5 a.m., stayed there for one and a half days, and then went overnight again to Orlando where I'm at now and got here like 6 a.m. So I've been just traveling a lot but i should settle in after tonight tomorrow we should be locked in and good so yeah let's get into the bible study verse of the day i got it on my phone i left my my bible in the car so this i had marked up john 11 9 through 10 jesus answered are there not 12 hours in the day if any man walk in the day he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world but if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. That's the King James Version. Sometimes I'll also like to go to the the message, MSG, just because it gives you kind of a perspective of it. Um, what did I say? Nine. Here. Jesus replied, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in daylight doesn't stumble because there's plenty of light from the sun. Walking at night, he might very well stumble because he can't see where he's going. So a lot of times in the Bible, you'll see Jesus kind of mentions like the light of the world. Right, and there's multiple verses where it talks about living in darkness versus living in light. So when you, when you learn to kind of seek God on a daily basis, and He becomes your, your source, your your food. You know, when you fill yourself with the Spirit, it kind of lightens up your mind, your heart, your your everything to become more self-aware of your actions that you might have not been aware of beforehand. So a lot of times, like when I don't know, like when you're walking in sin or when you're struggling with something, 
you don't really realize that you're doing any wrong. You don't really feel bad. We talked about this in a different Bible study before. You don't really feel bad for it because you're not really aware of what you're doing is morally wrong because you're living in darkness. But when you learn to kind of let the light of Jesus shine on your life and shine on your heart and you learn to accept it, you'll become aware of things that you're doing that you should not be doing. And then it becomes aware. Once you become aware of it, you realize there's a problem. That's when you can finally attack it head on, address it, change and repent from it. So kind of what I was getting from this is... Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. When you have no light, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, you're going to sin, you're going to mess up continuously with no kind of road to get better. Versus when you're living in light and you have God's light shining on you each and every day, you'll be aware of when you mess up. And that allows you to repent and to kind of change and to become, you know, a better Christian. And... Yeah, I mean, that's, I don't really know. I'm just going to make this one a quick one because it's pretty simple. Simple as that. You just don't want to overcomplicate it. If you're living in darkness and you're stumbling and you're messing up, seek God, seek the light, light up your world to become aware of these things. If you are living in darkness, but you don't really know what to seek yet or you don't want to seek God, you might be doing things that you think are going to fulfill you or you think are satisfying you, but you're still kind of left with that emptiness in your heart after you do those things. It might be fun temporarily. Um, it's because you're living in darkness and you're not yet made aware that those things will not fulfill you. Once you become kind of in that light, you will realize that these things are not going to fulfill you. you realize that Jesus is the only thing that can sustain you and fulfill you. And that propels you on a path, gives you perspective, or gives you a direction and a purpose to seek him and everything else kind of falls in place. All right, I'm sweating, bro. It's hot. All right, love y'all. See y'all tomorrow. Hopefully, I, I'm kind of rushing because I have to get this video out soon. But I hope that still is a good message for some of y'all, so... Um, tomorrow we should upload earlier because I'm going to the gym early, so we should be good. All right, Code Alex. Oh, just got that wrong. Code Alex on Rise. You guys didn't know again, I'm signed with Rise now. I'm going to do a podcast, probably record tomorrow or the next day, explaining that whole thing. But Code Alex, 15% off Rise supplements or Rise Fuel. Link in the bio or link in the description down below. Um, or Elysium, we decided to restock and Young LA. All right, love y'all. God bless. Till next time.